Welcome to YQ Academy SQL Interview Questions and Answers. 1. Can you have a nested transaction? No, SQL Server does not support explicit nested transactions. SQL Server uses a transaction model known as the Implicit Transaction Model, where each transaction is treated as a single unit of work. Within this model, explicit transaction control statements begin transaction, commit, rollback are used to define and manage transactions. While you can nest transactions within stored procedures, triggers, or other programmatic constructs, these nested transactions are treated as part of the outermost transaction. In other words, they are not separate and independent transactions. Changes made within a nested transaction are actually part of the parent transaction, and the nested transaction cannot be committed or rolled back independently. If you attempt to issue a commit or rollback statement within a nested transaction, it will affect the entire transaction chain and not just the innermost nested transaction. 2. What is an extended stored procedure? Can you instantiate a COM object by using TSQL? An extended stored procedure is a feature in Microsoft SQL Server that allows you to create and execute custom routines or functions written in programming languages other than TSQL. It enables you to extend the functionality of SQL Server by incorporating external code or accessing external resources. As for instantiating a COM object using TSQL, SQL Server does provide a mechanism to interact with COM objects through the use of the SP underscore O create system stored procedure. This stored procedure allows you to create an instance of a COM object with an SQL Server. However, it's important to note that the ability to instantiate COM objects from TSQL is considered an advanced feature and should be used judiciously, as it may introduce security risks and potential stability issues. When working with COM objects in SQL Server, you need to enable the Allay Automation feature, which is disabled by default for security reasons. Enabling this feature allows SQL Server to interact with COM objects through the SP underscore O create procedure and related system stored procedures. 3. What is the system function to get the current user's ID? In Microsoft SQL Server, the system function to retrieve the current user's ID is user underscore ID. The user underscore ID function returns the ID of the current user within the current database context. It takes no arguments and can be used in SQL statements or within queries. Here's an example of how you can use the user underscore ID function. This query will return the ID of the current user in the result set. 4. What are triggers? Triggers are special types of database objects in SQL Server that are associated with tables and are designed to automatically execute a set of actions in response to specific events or changes that occur in the database. Triggers are often used to enforce dot integrity, implement business logic, or perform additional actions based on certain conditions. 5. How many triggers can you have on a table? In Microsoft SQL Server, you can have multiple triggers on a single table. There is no specific limit to the number of triggers that can be defined for a table. However, it's important to consider the design and complexity of the triggers, as having too many triggers on a table can impact performance and maintainability. When multiple triggers are defined on a table, their execution order is determined by the triggers type DML or DDL and timing before or after. SQL Server provides a well-defined order of execution for triggers based on these factors. For example, multiple after triggers are executed in the order they were created. 6. How to invoke a trigger on demand. Triggers in SQL Server are designed to be automatically invoked when specific events or actions occur, such as an insert, update, or delete operation on a table. However, there is no direct mechanism to invoke a trigger on demand outside of these events. If you need to execute the logic defined in a trigger outside of its normal triggering events, you can consider refactoring the trigger's logic into a separate stored procedure or function. This way, you can invoke the stored procedure or function whenever you need to execute the trigger's actions. 7. What is a self-join? Explain it with an example. A self-join is a type of join operation where a table is joined with itself. In other words, it involves relating different rows within the same table based on a specific condition. 
Self-joins are useful when you need to compare or combine information from different rows within the same table. Here's an example to illustrate a self-join. The table represents employees in an organization where each employee has an ID, a name, and a manager that refers to another employee who is their manager. The manager at column establishes a relationship within the same table. Now, let's say we want to retrieve a report showing each employee's name along with the name of their respective manager. We can achieve this using a self-join. Here's the SQL query. This query joins the employee's table with itself based on the manager at column. It matches each employee with their corresponding manager by comparing the manager of an employee with the ID of another employee. The result will be. In this example, the self-join allows us to retrieve the names of employees along with the names of their respective managers from the same table. By relating the rows within the table, we can obtain meaningful information about the organizational hierarchy or relationships between employees. 8. The fine fact tables and dimension tables. 1. Fact table. A fact table is a central table in a data warehouse that contains the core quantitative or numeric data about a particular business process or event. It typically represents the facts or measurable data points that are the focus of analysis. The fact table consists of foreign keys referencing the related dimension tables and one or more measures or metrics. Key characteristics of a fact table contains numerical or quantitative data, represents the business events or transactions, contains foreign keys linking to dimension tables, includes one or more measures or metrics for analysis, such as sales revenue, quantity sold, or profit. 2. Dimension table. A dimension table provides descriptive information about the different aspects or attributes related to a business process or event captured in the fact table. Dimensions provide context and categorization for the measures in the fact table. They contain textual or descriptive data that helps in analyzing and filtering the facts. Key characteristics of a dimension table Contains descriptive attributes related to a business process or event. Provides context and categorization for the facts in the fact table. Typically has a primary key and is referenced by the foreign keys in the fact table. Can be used for slicing, dicing, and filtering data. 9. Explain the ETL process in data warehousing. The ETL extract, transform, load process is a crucial step in data warehousing that involves extracting data from various sources, transforming it into a suitable format, and loading it into the data warehouse for analysis and reporting. The ETL process ensures that data from different operational systems is consolidated, integrated, and organized in a consistent and structured manner within the data warehouse. Here are the main steps involved in the ETL process. 1. Extract. In this step, data is extracted from multiple heterogeneous sources such as databases, spreadsheets, files, or web services. The data extraction process involves identifying the relevant data sources, establishing connectivity, and retrieving the required data. The extracted data can come from various operational systems, such as sales systems, customer relationship management CRM systems, or production databases. 2. Transform. Once the data is extracted, it needs to be transformed into a consistent format that aligns with the data warehouse schema and business requirements. The transformation step involves several tasks, including data cleansing, data validation, data integration, data aggregation, data enrichment, and data quality checks. Transformations may include filtering out irrelevant data, removing duplicates, applying data conversions, standardizing formats, and performing calculations. 3. Load. After the data is transformed, it is loaded into the data warehouse. The loading process involves populating the appropriate tables in the data warehouse schema. This step includes mapping the transformed data to the corresponding tables and columns in the data warehouse, applying any necessary data integrity constraints, and ensuring the data is correctly inserted or updated in the data warehouse. The loading process may also involve handling incremental updates or appendently scenarios to keep the data warehouse up to date. This is the end of our SQL interview questions. We hope you enjoyed learning with YQ Academy. Until next time, goodbye.